So for this particular case, let's open this case for discussion. Uh, I will start with uh, the uh, question about the need for the bone marrow biopsy. I try to make a case that that is, is needed, but there is a counter argument many times that the management of patients with prefibrotic malofibrosis or ET does not really differ much. It is really about the thrombotic risk assessment and yes or no of cytodactic therapy. Andrew, what, what, what do you think about the need for bone marrows in patients, let's say 45 year old with a high platelets of 800,000? What, what would you look for and decide? Yeah, I'm, I think you're right in the sense that, that it, it's unlikely to change management. And I think that Rami talked about this a little bit in this uh, you know, discussion of polycythemia vera, but you know, with ET, the, the problem is, is that just with a clinical sign of high platelets and, and some, maybe some molecular information, uh, presuming a diagnosis of ET, maybe, maybe kind of looking at the rosy side of things, you know, there's a lot of things that can be seen on the marrow uh, that'll give you a better sense uh, of what's going on. And so you, you, I do prefer to get bone marrow biopsies on these patients, maybe not emergently, but certainly within the first year of diagnosis um, to, to make sure that, that we're truly being, dealing with ET. And it's unlikely to change management, but these are patients that you're likely going to be following, especially in, in your example of a 45-year-old. These are likely patients you're going to be following over the course of decades, uh, and they're likely to undergo different bone marrow biopsies, and you'd like to have a baseline to, to compare it to. And go just quickly, is there a really need for periodic bone marrow biopsies in otherwise clinically stable ET patient? Absolutely not. Uh, I don't recommend doing regular phlebotomy or regular uh, bone marrow biopsies to these patients. I often tell them the reason we'd ever do a, a bone marrow biopsy is if the disease changes or if there's questions that we can't answer just from the, the, the clinical situation and the blood work. Um, so no, not regularly, but, but certainly if the, if the white count goes up or if the, there's progressive anemia or other blood count concerns, uh, then, then oftentimes we will do another bone marrow biopsy. Now, the introduction of the presence of one or the other driver mutations in the, our prognostication for thrombosis is relatively new. Prithvi, is this something that we should really embrace a lot? And should we also test for other mutations, other mutations, not driver mutations in ET? These two parts, briefly. Yes, to the uh, first part, Serge, I, I think so. I think so. I think the, the uh, risk of thrombosis is largely restricted to JAK2, and at least the JAK2 CALAR differentiation is important. I think less is known about MIPL. We tend to cluster it with JAK2 uh, and, and kind of attribute it similar characteristics. But it's clear that the CALAR mutated patients have a much lower risk, and it's really the JAK2 that's driving the thrombosis. So I think, yes, that is important and it impacts management. Regarding the second question, again, I think that goes back to what we discussed with PV. There's been a number of genes, actually even more, uh, I think, in ET uh, than in PV that have been implicated as being somewhat adverse. Uh, SRSF2 is a, is a primary one. But again, I don't know that that impacts uh, management at this time. And I'm not sure that that should be a routine, te routine uh, test for everyone. Again, very important for research, though. 